Hi, it's Chuck. In time for episode two of Mastering Blazor Server Applications. If you haven't seen episode one, you might want to jump over there and check it out. Uh, the link is right up there. Yep, up there. Oh, back already? All right, let's get going. In this episode, we're going to learn all about Razor components. We'll create a couple of Razor components and use them within a page. Now, our focus is going to be on Blazor, Razor pages or Blazor, not HTML and not styles from Bootstrap. There's lots of great videos on YouTube for that. Now, let's start with a project overview. Over the next several lessons, we'll be implementing a simple web application for selling items online. We never thought about that, right? Think like uh, baby eBay. In this video, uh, we will create components for listing item titles and prices, as well as some details about those items. We'll use dummy data for now so that we can concentrate on the components. Now let's get right to it. We'll start by making some changes to index.razor. Look in the pages folder and open index. There's some stuff in there already that will change. So first of all, Let's change the page title to Garage Sale. This built-in component sets the browser tab text up at the top. Let's change the H1 element that's in there to say today's new items or something like that. Next, let's create a list of items that are for sale. Just the title and price, like a summary. We're going to wrap those items in a div that we can style with the list group bootstrap style. Let's use an A tag or a hyperlink for each one of the items so that the user can click on it. That way, when the user clicks on it, we can show them more information. We'll use a bunch of bootstrap classes on this element to make it uh, look really cool and neat. Uh, for instance, list group item, uh, list group item action, since it's an A tag flex column and align items at the beginning of the line. Now inside the hyperlink, let's create a flex box to hold the title and the price. We'll use a heading five for the title and we'll use the small tag for the price because we don't want that to be too big. Now copy and paste that item a couple of times so that you have two or three things and change up the title and price a little bit. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. This is just dummy data for now. Now let's check it out to see how we did. Right click on index.razor and choose view in browser from Visual Studio. Now Visual Studio guesses at what URL would take you to that view based on naming convention and it sometimes can be wrong like in this case. So once the page comes up, we'll just click on the home hyperlink. That'll take us to that index razor page. We're going to work on those menu items later in a future lesson, okay? All right, well, that, that looks all right. Not too bad. Now, don't close the browser. Just leave it open because we can make changes and we could just hit rebuild and the browser will automatically reload the page so that we get nearly instant feedback. This list of items is probably going to get used in several places in our application. So let me, let's make it reusable by making it a component. Select the list group div and all the way to the bottom and then hit cut. Now right click on your project and choose add new razor component. Let's name that component item summary. Be sure to use Pascal case, okay? Uppercase letter at the beginning. Let's put it in a separate subdirectory also of the, a subdirectory of pages called components. So right click again on the project or right click on pages and choose new folder and set the name to components and drag the item summary 
source file into that folder. Now the uh, folder is also a namespace, so we'll want to capitalize that as well. In index, we'll add the item summary tag to replace where the content used to be. Now it's going to be squiggly because the class isn't found. The component is in a namespace that mimics the folder structure. Just add a using statement. You can hit the uh, quick actions. Now hit build. And when the browser refreshes, it should look the same because we didn't effectively or structurally change anything in what the browser gets. Now let's create another component that shows the items detail and add a new razor component in the uh, components folder. And let's name that item detail. Okay, item detail dot razor. Set the heading uh, to an item title, just make something up and add some details like description, price, quantity, SKU, weight, whatever you want. This is just placeholder data, so it's really not that important. We just want to see how it looks and make sure that we can navigate about all of our different uh, components. So don't worry about the actual information. Add this component to the bottom of the item summary so that we can see what it looks like. Now, rebuild. The browser refreshes. Okay, cool. That looks good. But we don't really want the summary and the detail to be visible at the same time. So let's create a toggle. At the code section at the bottom of the file is where we put the code part of our class. We can declare fields and methods and properties and everything else. So let's create a private field of type Boolean named detail visible and initialize it to false. Now it's okay that it's private because this is all, all of this code is part of the same class. Now let's wrap the summary div with an if not detail visible C sharp code and wrap, wrap the item detail with the else part. Now let's add a private method to our code block. Call it private void toggle detail that toggles the Boolean from true to false, false to true. We can do that with an expression method, in fact. In both A tags and the button, add an on click event. Now, on click is an HTML event which is triggered client side. We want to call the code block toggle detail, which executes server side. So when adding on click, we'll precede the on click with an at sign. This means server side. There's a lot of confusion on when an at sign is needed and when it isn't. The at sign switches from HTML mode to C sharp mode. Once in C sharp mode, the parser will stay in C sharp mode until it encounters HTML. For instance, after the open curly brace, the parser is in C sharp mode until it encounters the angle bracket on the div. For the on click event, since we are in HTML mode, that's an HTML event. We need to precede with an at sign to tell the parser, oh no, we're in mm -hmm. server side C sharp mode now. The toggle detail method doesn't require the at sign because we're still in C sharp mode. Now, generally speaking, lowercase events are normally client side and belong to HTML. And if you want to execute a C sharp code, that will require the at sign. Blazor component attributes are typically uppercase and their events as well, and therefore they don't require an at sign. By the way, we didn't have to define a method in the code section. We could have just used a lambda in the uh, event. Okay, let's jump back to index.razor. The starter template uh, originally provided this for us, and since the code block was empty, it was omitted. Of course, we can simply manually add that as a placeholder if we wish. Now, if you don't like the idea of having code and HTML mixed together in the same file, there is an option to separate them. We'll talk about that in a later lesson.
Also, notice index has an at page directive at the top. This makes this component navigable as a web page. Our other components that we just created can only be used if referenced from a page. Now, I know the design of this application is far from ideal. The detail component is nested within the summary. It would probably make a lot more sense and be cleaner if that functionality was at the index level and the summary and detail could be completely independent. We'll fix that in a later lesson. Now let's run the application. Now let's use the browser debugger to take a look at the client side DOM. Initially, you can see the summary list. If we click on something, the DOM changes. You can verify that the code is executing server side by watching the traffic in the network tab. A really cool feature of Blazor is the ability to run in WebAssembly client side. We'll look at that option with our application in a future lesson. Hey, if you liked this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. In our next lesson, uh, we're going to look at component properties, parameters, and events so that we can wire up a robust application and reuse components. Now, if you have questions about this or anything else, please leave them in the comments and we'll answer those as quickly as possible. Now, you might like what's in this next video. I'm Chuck McCullough. We'll see you next time.